Good morning, Middletown United Methodist Church. I'm Leslie. I'm one of the pastors here at Middletown, pastor of our Eastwood campus. We are delighted that you are here to worship with us today. Christ has risen and Christ has given us his spirit. Thanks be to God. We are so delighted that you're here to worship that risen Christ with us today. We hope that your hearts and minds are blessed in this time of worship together. Will you please join me in a word of prayer as we center ourselves for worship? Gracious and loving God, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for all that you are doing around us. We thank you for the gift of your son and the gift of your spirit. God, as we listen today to these words that are spoken, to this music that is shared, may our hearts be blessed. May our minds be opened. May we receive a word of encouragement and strength as we go forward through this week. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. The third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence, he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
We now continue our time of worship with the giving of our tithes and offerings. We, of course, can't pass the offering plates like we normally would in service at this point, but, but we do invite you to consider alternative ways of giving by giving online, by, by giving through text, by, by giving by setting up bill payer at your bank, or, or by giving by mailing in a good old check if that's, if that's what you'd like to do. We've been incredibly grateful during this time of a virtual worship for y'all's faithful faithful support of your church and its ministries. We've been blown away by your generosity, and we are incredibly grateful for the ways that you've continued to to faithfully give and, and faithfully support the ministries of Middletown. Hi, everybody. I hope you're doing well and you're staying safe and you're enjoying this time with your family. Uh, I'd like to do a song that was written over 100 years ago by the son of a slave, a man that grew up on a plantation. And uh, I think this song is just as relevant today as it ever was, if not more so. And there's a great message here that there, there's hope. There's hope in the Lord. There's something better coming. Here we go. Here now a reading from the Word of God, the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verses 15 to 21. If you love me, you will obey what I command, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever, the Spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he lives in you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me because I live and you also will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, you are in me, and I am in you. 
Whoever has my commands and obeys them, he is the one who loves me. He who loves me will be loved by the Father, and I too will love him and show myself to him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Do you remember the book, The Giving Tree, by Shel Silverstein? It begins with an apple tree. The tree loved a small boy, and the boy loved the tree too. He would often come to play with the tree. The boy would gather her leaves and climb up in her trunk and swing from her branches. The boy spent a lot of time with the tree. The tree would give the boy shade while he ate her apples. And they had a lot of fun together and were both very happy. But time went by and the boy started growing up. He visited the tree less and less as he grew older and the tree grew very lonely. After a while, the boy came back. The tree wanted to be happy with the boy again, but the boy wasn't there to play. The boy wanted to make money. The tree wanted to make the boy happy, so she gave him all of her apples to sell. More time passed, and finally the boy came back again, and he wanted to build a house. So the tree gave him all of her branches. The tree didn't have much more to give, but she still tried. And the boy came back and wanted a boat to sail away, so the tree gave her gave the boy her trunk and told him to build a boat out of it every time the tree gave something to the boy she felt happy so she continued to give much later the boy came back and the boy was very old now and didn't need much yet the tree still wished to give him something at this point the tree had almost nothing she was just an old stump in the forest The tree offered her stump as a chair for the boy, and the boy was happy, and so was the tree. The giving tree, the story of unconditional love given from a tree to a boy, love that was visible in the way that the tree cared for the boy. And in today's passage, we look at the love of Jesus as he passes it down to his followers. Jesus begins this passage saying, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. Jesus is beginning to help his followers to look forward to the future, to make a plan for the way that they will live their lives when he is no longer with them. And the ways that they will embrace the love that Jesus has shown them in their own lives. And Jesus uses the Passover to demonstrate his unconditional love for them that they are called to share. In the chapter just before this, Jesus ties a towel around his waist, kneels down, and washes the disciples' feet. He bows at the feet of his followers as their teacher and Lord shows them that the love of God has no hierarchy And the truth of God calls us to be neighbor and to love one another. The model that Jesus extends to his disciples in the washing of the feet sets up this conversation for them looking toward the future. When Jesus will no longer walk among them. He knows that he will soon be leaving them. And they're called to continue the work and the love of Christ in the world without him. But he assures them that they will not be left alone, that an advocate, the Holy Spirit, will be with them, guiding them, and showing them the way to continue the work of Christ. And he reassures them that they will not be left alone. I can imagine the way that the disciples would feel alone and unsure of how to do this work without Jesus. But he's reassuring them that he does not leave them, but works within each of them. 
Jesus is trying to make something very plain for his followers. All he asks of them is to embrace the love that he has demonstrated for them as a goal for their own lives. Jesus is preparing to send them out into new territory, into a world that might not be welcoming of the message of love and care for the stranger. But the love that Jesus calls them to practice is one that they have seen on display in their journey together. We're given the same model in our own lives. In these days when life is chaotic, yet eerily slow. In the days when the life we knew in February no longer exists. We are extended this call and love of Christ to care for one another, to love one another, and to show one another the love of Christ even when we cannot be physically together. I'm sure you've seen the stories of people showing compassion to strangers, nurses who held the hand of someone who could not be with their family in their final moments, care for neighbors who cannot leave the house by dropping off groceries, or strangers sharing toilet paper. These stories and these acts of kindness that may have seemed so small many months ago are acts of love in Christ being shared with strangers and friends. And in these days, when we may feel alone and isolated, Jesus reminded the disciples and he reminds us that we are not orphans sent into the world alone, but we are reminded that Jesus walks with us, the Holy Spirit works through us, and there may be days when we cannot see the way that Christ is working in our lives. But even in those moments, Jesus is visible. And we are still a community of faith, even in these days when we cannot gather together. While we haven't gathered together in about two months, We have not been orphaned. We are not alone and we are not forgotten. These are the days in which Christ remind us that he loved us unconditionally and that in keeping his commandment, we are honoring the love given to us by caring for the neighbor and the stranger and by the way that we will live our lives and this new normal of social distancing and excessive hand washing and caring for the hearts of others. So what does love look like in these days? How is the love of Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit illuminating our world? Rebecca went to the grocery store one afternoon. As she was walking, she heard a woman yelling at her from her car. Rebecca walked over and saw an elderly woman and her husband. She cracked the window a bit and explained to her nearly in tears that she was afraid to go into the store. Afraid to get sick as they were in their 80s and here the coronavirus is affecting older people. And they don't have family around to help them out. And through the crack of the window, she handed Rebecca a $100 bill and their grocery list and asked if she would be willing to go buy their groceries. She bought the groceries and placed them in their trunk and gave back the change. And the woman told Rebecca that they had been sitting in their car for nearly 45 minutes before she had arrived, waiting to ask the right person for help. Rebecca said, I know that it's a time of hysteria and nerves, but offer to help anyone you can. Not everyone has people to turn to. We are the church. We are Christians now as much as ever, and Christ instilled in the disciples and instills in each of us the gift 
the power and the knowledge to keep the commandment of loving and caring for each other. We are given the Holy Spirit as an advocate and a guide to show us the ways that we are to act in these new days of our lives. 1 John 4, 8 says, God is love. When we begin to see that when love is a condition of all things, and when love is both infinite and practiced, that love will override all. The love that Jesus wants his hearers to embrace is not this abstract philosophical concept, but the lived reality revealed in the life and the relationships and the actions of a simple Nazarene who looks and talks like them and lives simply among them. He feeds the hungry and he touches lepers and heals the sick and speaks and acts toward women with care and regard. Love is seen in the life of service and compassion and instilled in each of us on our journey of faith. When we work together as community, hope is born. Jesus teaches of the love of God, demonstrates the love of God, and passes it down to his disciples and each of us to continue the story and continue the chain. We are living in a time of difficulty, of illness, of frustration, depression, anxiety, confusion, and heartache. But where there is darkness, there is hope. And we carry the light of the world within each of us to help illuminate the love of God that is within us. Jesus was not leaving his disciples orphaned. We are not separated from one another for long. This will not last forever, but not ever truly alone with the Holy Spirit, the advocate and the friend who reminds us each day of the love of God given to us unconditionally in his Son. Keep the commandment of the one who revealed himself to us in his words and his actions and gives us the message to carry on. Beth was sitting in an airport terminal waiting to board a plane. As she waited, she noticed that people around her were staring at something behind her. She turned around to see a flight attendant pushing a wheelchair with a man in it. He had this long white hair that was a tangled mess. His face was really, really wrinkled, and he didn't look very friendly at all. She said she didn't know why, but she felt drawn to this man. No matter what she did, she couldn't get the man off of her mind, and all of a sudden, she knew what she was supposed to do. So she went down and she knelt in front of the old man and said, Sir, may I have the honor of brushing your hair? And he said, What? She thought, Oh, great. So a little bit louder, she said, Sir, may I have the honor of brushing your hair for you? And he answered and he said, If you're going to talk to me, you're going to have to speak up. So this time she's almost yelling at him, Sir, may I have the honor of brushing your hair? So with everyone watching to see what his response would be, the old man just looked at her and confused and said, Well, I guess if you really want to. She said, I don't even have a brush, but I thought I would ask anyway. And he said, Look in the bag at the back of my chair. There's a brush in there. She got, got out the brush and started brushing his hair. She had a little girl with long hair, so she knew she had lots of practice to get the tangles out. And she knew how to be gentle with him. She worked for a long time until every last tangle was out. And just as she was finishing up, she heard the old man crying. She went and put her hands on his knees 
kneeling in front of him, looking directly into his eyes and said, Sir, do you know Jesus? He answered and he said, Yes, of course I know Jesus. You see, my bride told me she couldn't marry me unless I knew Jesus. So I learned all about him and asked him to come into my heart many years ago before I married my bride. And he continued and he said, You know, I am on my way home to go see my wife. I've been in the hospital for a long time. I had to have a special surgery in a town far from my home, and my wife couldn't come see me because she was so frail herself. He said, I was so worried about how terrible my hair looked, and I didn't want her to see me looking so awful, but I couldn't brush my hair all by myself. Tears were rolling down his cheeks as he thanked Beth for brushing his hair. He thanked her over and over again. She was crying, and people all around witnessing this were crying as well. And they were all boarding the plane as the flight attendant said, Why did you do that? And right there was an opportunity, the door that had been opened to share with someone else. The love of God. We don't always understand God's ways, but be ready. He may use us to meet the need of someone else. While obviously this happened before the days that we were living in, we are still living in a time in our lives where we're called to be a neighbor, to be a helper to be a model of the love of Christ, even at a distance. We're called to see the need and act, even when we're six feet away. We're called to live in Christ's image, maybe not in the same space as one another. It's hard. These days are confusing to live out. And when we see a need, but often we may not be able to act in the way that we have imagined. But we're called to act out the love of Christ. He invites us to do so. I know we're all getting a little anxious and stir-crazy at times. It's understandable. There are some who are ready to get out of the house and others who will continue to be unsure about leaving their homes for the next few months. But in these days, the way that we can share in Jesus' commandment and the way that we are called to extend the love and care for one another, maybe through a phone call, a note, Extending the offer to help with groceries, a prayer, and many other ways we haven't even thought of yet. Jesus was trying to make a plan for his followers. And all he asks of them is to embrace the love that he had lived among them as a goal for their lives and for our own. So how will you model the love of God, the call of Christ with the power and vision given to each of us through the Holy Spirit? How will you go where God is calling you in new ways, seeking new opportunities to share the love that Christ demonstrated for each of us? Amen. Would you join me in a time of prayer? And with confidence, let us approach the throne of God. Would you pray with me? God, you are worthy of all the praise that we can bring to you. All of creation lifts their voices to you, praising you for who you are, our great and awesome God. We are more than grateful for all the blessings that you bring into our life, those seen and unseen, the blessings that you bring to all creation and all of your people. So God, today we lift our voices in gratitude to you 
for all that you do for us. Lord, in our lives, you have called each of us. For those who have identified that call, strengthen them and empower them to live out the call that you've placed in their life. And for those who are still searching, Lord, help them to find the path that you have for them. Confirm for them your will in their life so that together we may do the work that you have called us to do. For there is much work to do for the sake of Christ in this world. There are many who need hope and peace. There are many who need to be loved and encouraged. And there are many who need to know you and know your power in their life. And Lord, in the midst of this crisis in which we are living, Lord, we pray for those who have been most affected. We pray for the families who have lost loved ones and who are grieving today, who were not able to stand with their family members and hold their hands as they left this world. Lord, give them peace and comfort. For those who are needing healing, I pray God that you would touch them and be with them as they make their way through this sickness. And Lord, we pray for those who are serving them and caring for them, helping to bring the healing that they need. And Lord, as our world begins to reopen and so many people will have to be facing the public, some of them fearful for their lives. Lord, protect them as they serve. And Lord, today there are those among us in our congregation that need your love, need your touch, need your healing. Lord, we lift uh, Paul Newton, Dave Jonitis, Jessica Blocker. Lord, we pray for Marshall Wolf as he grieves the death of his wife. And Lord, we are grateful uh, for the good news that Kim Jenkins received this week. And so God, we lift to you the concerns and the praises that we have. And, and now we lift to you those who are on our heart. Lord, thank you again. Thank you for your love and your presence in our lives. And now let us pray together the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
friends, and now as you go into your weeks, wherever your weeks may take you or not take you, may you go in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the incredible love of God our Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen.